Hello everyone. I'm Vandita Sarda from Actuators Educational Institute. Hello everyone. I'm Vandita Sarda from Actuators Educational Institute. And today I'm here to talk about the course Actuarial Science and why should one go for it? In fact, why did I go for it? Now the thing is, key when we come out of school, we have a lot of options available for us, especially for students from the commerce background. There are so many courses, so many professional degrees and so many people talking about all of it. How do we choose and why do we choose actuarial science? So now the thing is that actuarial science, ka jab baat aate, people talk more negative rather than positive. And uske karen, there are a lot of questions that people come up with. So these are some of the most commonly asked questions about actuarial science. Beginning with the most common one. Is it too tough and is it too long? Trust me, not at all. So before I come to this part, let's quickly go through my actuarial journey so that then I can show you all why most of these are just myths. So <clears throat> I began my actuarial journey in September 2019 because I graduated from school in the month of May 2019. So I began with the first paper, which was CM1. Since I was appearing from the UK Institute, I did not have to give any entrance examination that time. After that, in April 2020, the examinations got cancelled since there was, of course, COVID. In September 2020, I appeared for two papers, CB1 and CB2. So now quickly, along with my exams uh, pattern, let me just also tell you what exactly was there in these papers. In CM1, which is primarily focusing on mathematics and an insight into what we will be doing ahead, especially with a lot of focus on the insurance sector. September 22, uh, September 2020, I went for CB1 and CB2. CB1 is business finance, which focuses completely on the finance side, accounts, etc. for businesses. CB2 is business economics, which is again micro as well as macroeconomics pertinent to our course. In April 2021, I appeared for CS1, which is the first paper on statistics. It focuses completely on the stats portion and builds a strong base for the remaining papers. Then in September 2021, because of the push I got from the institute, which is basically Actuators Educational Institute and Praveen Sir himself, I decided to appear for two of the uh, apparently toughest papers in the course, which is CS2 and CM2 together in the same diet. Now, CS2 was somewhat of a buildup of CS1 and CM2 somewhat of a buildup of CM1. But to be very honest, CS2 focused more on the insurance side, wherein we covered a lot of interesting topics, including machine learning as well. CM2 was more focused on finance and some part of insurance, very small part of insurance, but mainly finance, very interesting, very um, commonly heard topics like derivatives, uh, securities, shares, etc. Portfolio management as well. So that was about CS2 and CM2. Then at the end of 2021, I decided to take a shift of institute into IEI. By that time, I had already appeared for the ASET examination, which is the entrance examination for the Indian Institute in June of 2021, since I began teaching. Then in the month of March 22, I appeared for CP2 and CP3. Now, CP2 is a modeling paper wherein we use Excel to build models for different situations. And CP3 is a communication-based paper that where they test our communication skills, wherein we have to communicate technical knowledge to usually non-technical audience. We have to decide what all portions to communicate, how to communicate, whether to use some uh, graphs or etc. Then in July 22, I appeared for CP1, which is again one of the most sought after papers of actuarial science, one of the so-called toughest papers. Then in December 22, I appeared for SP5, 
Now, CP1 is basically actuarial practice. This paper takes together whatever knowledge you have gained up till here and puts it into one paper and tries to apply all of it to real world scenarios. SP5, since I was specializing in investment and finance with my chartered accountancy background, SP5 focused on investment and finance and SA7, which is advanced investment and finance, that was in May 23 and November 23. I could not clear my exam in the May 23 diet when I had actually also appeared for CB3, which was a business simulation game. It is a very interesting paper, very practical paper, wherein they actually give you real world scenarios and they ask you to simulate four rounds of teamwork. And then finally, you can clear that paper. In November 23, I reappeared for SA7 and cleared it, which was the end of my actuarial journey not the entire journey but yes the exam part of it so as you can see from september 19 to november 23 it was round about four and a half years together around 11 diets and 13 papers one paper exempt of course there's 13 plus one papers so one paper was exempt because of my chartered accountancy but yes so now let's see what are the common myths about this course? Too tough. I would not say it is too tough because it is again a very personal choice. It is tough for people who would like to believe it's tough. It is tough for people who are making a wrong choice by getting into this field. But if you are capable and if you are consistent, it is not at all tough. Is it too long? I wouldn't say it's too long, especially considering now graduation is in India is going to become four years. I completed the course in four and a half years. So by the time you graduate, you would be utilizing your time efficiently and clearing most of the papers of the course. Consistency, of course, is key in this uh, course. If you are consistent, as you could see, I did not miss any diet that came my way. Even if there was just two months of preparation or six months of preparation, I ensured that at least one paper I will appear for. And if possible, if I feel my preparation was enough for one paper, I would go ahead and prepare for another paper, which is again a very big plus point of this course that you appear for papers at your own pace. There is no fixed structure that you have to give exams in this order or you have to give your exams at so and so intervals. You can appear for as many papers as you want in every diet. Is it just maths? So right now when I showed you all what were the con major contents of all the papers, you could have figured out that it's not just maths. In fact, it is neither completely practical nor is it completely theoretical. It is a blend of both, which means that you do not have to be very strong at practical or very strong at theory. It is both things balanced in this course. One more thing is that in today's world, just theory or just solving sums is not enough. It is very important to be able to apply it practically and have a good knowledge of technical skills as well, which is why since 2019, this course has incorporated R programming and Excel into its curriculum, which was part of the CM and CS papers. So because of that, it gives us an added advantage when we are appearing for job interviews, when we are going and working in the real world, that time we already have a base in these two softwares. No jobs. Now in India, this long gone are the days when there was no demand for actuaries. In fact, if we talk about today, India has a huge demand for actuaries and all institutes are really promoting the course because risk is something we love. Risk is something we handle. And in today's world, there is only and only risk. No social life. Again, absolutely false. There is ample time to have a social life. If you are consistent, you just have to give three hours of study maximum in a day. 
in the entire course because the course is so well spaced out you will never feel a lot of burden on you if you start from day one of course if you leave things for the end you are bound to feel the burden but if you follow a proper schedule and if you give some time to your studies every day you will have a lot of time for your social life is this course not enough so actuarial science in itself is a big course it covers a lot of aspects and it is actually enough but if you think that you are capable of more you can always opt for some ancillary courses for some other courses that go hand in hand with actuaries for which we have different videos available only for insurance again there are a variety of specializations available in the course i went for an investment and finance specialization one of you can choose life insurance one can choose health insurance some can also choose uh, general insurance enterprise risk management etc so there are a lot of options it is not just insurers who hire us we are demanded everywhere not with college so this course in fact begins the day you are done with your 10 plus 2 you can start preparing for this course there is no age foundation you can take your time you can uh, do whichever exam you want whenever and at the same time it's not just about college this is a course you can do along with work you can have a part time job a full time job a business of your own anything and everything goes well with actuarial science so that was somewhat all of the reasons why actuarial science was my go to course and could be yours too so if you have any further questions you can always contact us through any of our uh, handles thank you so much